Right, everybody, here we are at the fireside. This is, of course, a traditional wilderness uh, thing around the world where we sit around the fire and tell tall stories. Now, I must just tell you, before we carry on, just over there, Sindila the Leopard is coming this way with Jamie. He might make an appearance at the fireside chat. It will be quite interesting to see what happens if he sits down here. I shall tickle him gently behind his lovely spotted ears. Now, we're going to take you off to have a look at the ladies behind the scenes. Rebecca, Louise, Jerry and Kirsten in the director's seat operating everything there. They are the ones who, show, who share your questions with us through Twitter. They direct it, they vision mix it. They're in a remarkable bunch of people. Have a look at this. Standing by for countdown. Three, two, one. You are alive, you are alive. James Richard, New York. Which leopard is this? Standing by. Off air in three, two, one. Bob is wrapped. So that's what they do, and they're a remarkable bunch of people. You know that they're not standing by. Yeah. Huge amount of work, no sound. Have we got any because sound, anybody? Yes, yeah, sound is back. Oh, what a joy. Okay, don't know what if you... They probably blanked me out because I was making comments on how fine the ladies are to look at in the final control. Now, one of the things that we do out here is walk about on the bush. And I know that many of you, having watched Steph drinking that rather distasteful concoction of elephant dung, will be wondering how on earth it is that we bring you a live walking stream. Take a look at this. Fifty seconds, fifty. We can just enjoy the fact that we're viewing a leopard on foot in Africa live. It couldn't be any better. Now, welcome back, everybody. Next to me, I have the figure of Jean Ray Gerding, of course. Now, Jean Ray makes me very jealous, of course, because unlike the plover like legs I have, Jean Ray has legs which were, well, I mean, you could probably fire them out of a cannon. They're very large things, and he uses them to wander about the place. And, of course, he, oh, give that back to me. Second, he has actually, he's, he's very dangerous job he has. He was bitten by a tick, I think, at some stage there. Now, jean <laughs> all jokes aside, <laughs> talk us through the dangers of being a bushwalk cameraman. Well, uh, I mean, the bushwalk is, I guess, similar to being on the vehicles. You've got the same animals out there. You've got the elephants, you've got the buffalo, but you don't have the protection of the vehicle. So um, we have to implicitly trust the team. We've got Herbert, who's on our safety detail watching as uh, Steph presents, and I'm focused on, uh, on the little frames, trying to show the story that Tre Steph is trying to weave for us. Cool. Yeah. Now, while you, you say that you need the security detail. Why do you need a security detail? What, why can't you look around and see what's going on? Well, I mean, um, I've got a big backpack on me and I've got it really much to be zoned in. I've got headphones on, I've ah. got radio comms in coming from Final Control. So I'm not as aware of the environment as the presenters are. I mean, yesterday afternoon we walked into uh, Elephants on Foot, we walked into Buffalo on Foot, which has been described to me as, you know, cutting yourself and swimming in a shark tank. Yeah. Yes, I wouldn't quite go that far, but yes, certainly there are elements of danger around it. Talk us through the difference between being on a vehicle from a technique point of view. What's the difference between being on a, on a vehicle where you've got a solid tripod and being on foot? So in bush, you handhold, you've got to walk, you've got sticks to watch over, and you've got this big backpack on your back. And you, you, you can't bend over or lean over. You've just got to be in a squatting position, moving around, keeping that aerial upright, you know. And if you get in a spot of danger where you have to retreat, you can't just climb a tree, you've got to, you know, you, you've got to 
weave yourself mm. through the bush with this antenna wobbling all the way through. Did you, do you find that uh, your history as a pole dancer helped you with those squats that you have to do holding the, the camera? Immensely. I think lap dancing helped a bit more. But right, so, that's enough of that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Before <laughs> we get too high into Jean-Dre's sordid history, let's head across to have a look at some of the new technology that's going on. We're going to be in the air, and you've met Ronald today. He was looking at things from the ground, and we're going to discuss shortly where that line is. You saw the buffalo react to Ronald today. Have a look at the new technology coming to Wild Earth. Right, everybody. Well, next to me, of course, I have the immense figure of uh, Ronald the Rover. Oh. oh, and he, of course, <laughs> is sitting with the Makula boss, the father, I suppose, of Wild Earth and Safari Live, Mr. Graham Wallington. Thank you, James. Yes. Uh, tell us about Ronald and how his evolution came about. Well, I guess Ronald is really, uh, you know, a, a, another step along the journey of trying to help uh, you guys get that much closer to the natural world around here. And that's what Safari Live is all about, really, is giving a different per point of view and a different way of connecting directly with the animals. And Ronald's our latest attempt to do so. He did a very fine job, I'm sure you'll all agree today. But we did have that one incident where, at the beginning of the show, there was a horn of a buffalo sticking in from the left-hand side of Ronald's vision and I moved the rover and the buffalo reacted, well, I suppose you could say negatively. He did get a fright. He didn't go away, but he did back off. Where's the line? So that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I think that, that our, our mission here is to connect people, but not to disturb the, to disturb the animals. And, um, and whenever we have technology or people or vehicles or anything in the bush, there's a risk that we might, you know, disturb the animals. And, uh, and, and, and I guess w what we should have done with the rover is just not move it at all when the animals are around and only get it into position and then mm. wait for them to be there. Mm. But I mean, like we, we've discussed, of course, they do get used to these new things. And exactly. so that line well, does move. Over time, the animals get habituated to it. So that's what happened with vehicles over time. And that's what's happening with the rover and with the drones and so on. And, and that's our objective is to go gently with them and take them along mm. on the journey. Now, from low level to high level, uh, we've been in the air recently as well, haven't we? We have. Um, so we've been using quadcopters quite a lot, um, and, but they make a lot of noise. Mm. And particularly the elephants find that buzzing noise disturbing. So we have to stay very, very high up. Our next mission is to start using fixed wing drones, um, which are much quieter, and to have zoom lenses, stabilized zoom lenses on them so we can stand far off, but still get that close tight mm. view of them. And. Uh, not only during the day, I mean, the future does hold us flying around here at night, doesn't it? Absolutely. So that's the next big thing as well, is to um, use the you fly at night with a thermal imaging camera so that we can see the heat signatures from the animals, but also to use infrared cameras on the vehicles because infrared is invisible to the animals, mm. um, which means that we're not disturbing them with the white light. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Graham. Yeah, you may now be excused. Uh, <laughs> we are now going to take a look behind the scenes at, I think, and I'm sure all of you think one of the most romantic jobs a human being can have, that of a wildlife cameraman.
So, next to me you see the very substantial figure of Brian Joubert. Now, of course, I am just 5 feet and 8 inches tall. Can't do that, I'm not strong enough. Uh, Brian, you are 6 feet and 4 inches tall. This is true. Well done. Thank you. Now, how did you get into being a wildlife cameraman? I know that there are dads and lads and definitely daughters as well out there wondering how it is that they would do what you do. Well, the number one key ingredient to making it as a wildlife cameraman is to have passion. If you love what you do and you are really passionate about it, you won't work a day in your life and you'll also follow the correct avenues to get out here really. By loving what you do and being so enthusiastic about nature and animals and everything, cameras, you know, you'll go through the motions to make the right contacts, do the right training and before you know it, you'll land out here. And I guess one of the things that you haven't mentioned, there is some sort of formal qualification. Mm. You're not formally qualified as no, a cameraman. No, I'm not. So you can learn it on the job. You can indeed. If you have the opportunity, when opportunity strikes, you must take it. And you learn on the job. You learn as you go. What do you think the greatest challenge of your life as a wildlife cameraman is? Whew, the greatest challenge of a wildlife cameraman? Getting the shot. Especially being live. If you miss mm. that shot, it's done. You can't reminisce over it, you can't beat yourself up, you just have to carry on. So one of the greatest challenges is definitely nailing that shot every time. So I mean, just to reiterate what Brian's saying there, he's saying, of course, being a documentary filmmaker is completely different from mm. what you do, right? Indeed, yes. So you've only got one chance. You've only got one chance out here. When you're doing a documentary, you can sit down for a couple of months even to get the right shot. Out here, you've only got that one slim chance to make it. I guess it's the ultimate in reality TV. I mean, this really is as real as it gets. Sandile is knocking about just behind us and he could be back. Mm. Now, well, we, we hope he might be back. <laughs> uh, Brian, uh, the kit that you were wearing here, mm. uh, talk us through the buff. The buff is to actually hide my beautiful luscious locks. Yeah, spectacular locks. So don't get too tangled there. and knotted yes. on the drive. Not a no, good time. No. no. Then, of course, moving away from the romance of the job, of course, we live in quite a small camp, don't mm. we? Uh, what are the challenges of living uh, away from home, if you like? Well, one of the biggest <laughs> challenges from being away from home is you're not at home. You miss your family, you miss your friends, you're very isolated out here. And when you are in such a close-knit camp, you can't get away from anyone. You're mm. on top of each other all the time. It is a bit of a challenge, but we do make a plan to get out there, you have some downtime, you get to relax and do your own thing. All in all, not too bad. And it's lucky I'm such a nice fellow, isn't oh, it? Yes, 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 yes it's very good, yes. Talk us through one of your, can you think of a, a hairy incident that you've had? Because you've described that disconnect between the lens and the action, where the presenter feels, oh my goodness, I can't believe what I've just seen, and the cameraman sits in the back of the car looking <laughs> sort of glum. Well, when we're out there, we are viewing the action through a tiny screen like this you are very disconnected you might as well be watching the action from the comfort of your own home when the action is going on me personally I try to keep a level head you don't let the excitement of what is going on get to your bones if you get it to your bones you start shaking mm -hmm. maybe there's an elephant close to the vehicle and you, you you don't know what you're doing then so hairiest moment I would say we had some hyena being eaten by a wild dog. We had one wild dog, oh sorry, one hyena being chomped by a pack of wild dogs. It was very exciting. The savagery of the situation was unbelievable. But again, because I'm viewing it from such a small screen, mm. I might as okay. well not have even been there. Right. Mm. Now, everybody, Brian's not only a talented wildlife cameraman, are you, Brian? No. What else are you able to do, Brian? I can beatbox. Oh, goodness. Oh, dear. Would you like to lay down a beat for I Father's Day? I would love to. Are you yeah, ready, James? Yes. Here we go. That's too fast. Okay, all right. Okay, slow down. All right, I'll slow it down for okay. you. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you everybody for coming along to Father's Day at Safari Live. We hope you had a good time with the animals. I'm making this up as I go along. Bye bye everyone. Thank you for being with us. Follow us twice a day, wildsafarilive.com. Until then, bye bye.